Hello everybody and welcome to this Rhino video tutorial. I am Vanessa Steg, and in today's tutorial I would like to walk through some of the features for rendering in Rhino 6. In particular, let's focus on materials. But before anything, I'd like to point out that when you open a model in Rhino, you will often find yourself in shaded mode or in wireframe, such as is the case right now. Shaded mode shows the objects and the ISO curves, the color of the layer. To visualize materials, lightings, and any other rendering setting applied to the scene, you need to click on the arrow in the viewport title and select Rendered. This will automatically turn the scene into a white studio effect, giving you soft shadows and this nice diffuse lighting that illuminates all of the model. Now if you're opening a model that comes from Rhino 5 or a previous version of Rhino, it will still be the grayish toned scene that you would get in Rhino 5. To update the model to a V6 look, go over to the rendering panel and click on Reset to Defaults. Now let's go back to talking about materials. Now in Rhino we have different ways of applying materials. And we also have different material sources or ways of creating materials. I would like to walk through all of these options. Now to apply materials in Rhino you can go on a per layer basis, meaning that all the objects contained within a layer will inherit the layer's material, which by the way is our recommended way of working since it'll make it easier to edit and make changes to the model. So for that you need to select the layer and click on the material icon. This will automatically open the material editor and you can select a material from the list or create a new one. Now in this case we don't have a whole lot of materials in the list so let's go ahead and click on the plus sign and note that we have a new dialog box. Now these are the three ways that we can apply or select a material from in Rhino. We can import it from the existing material library which contains hundreds and hundreds of new materials and is a richful resource for applying materials in Rhino 6. Or we can use a custom material which will take us back to the same settings and configurations for material editing that we had in Rhino 5. Now new to V6 is also the material presets, which we will come back at a later moment. For now, let's import from the material library. So we are applying per layer using the material library in Rhino 6. You will see that this will automatically default to the render content folder that contains all of the materials for V6. In this case, let's scroll down to wood and browse until we find our right material type. At this point I can edit any of the settings available in the material editor. For instance, I will lower down the reflectivity for this material type and validate out of the dialog box. As you can see, all objects contained within that layer have inherited this wood type. Let's try that again. This time I'll go over to metal joints and click on the material icon. I will now click on the list and on the plus sign and instead of applying on a per material basis I will try one of the new presets built in into Rhino 6. Let's go for metal. Here you can see one of the main differences with previous versions of Rhino. By selecting one of the presets that we have a simplified interface with specific material options for the material type. In this case for metal we can change the color, we can change the reflectivity levels, or add a bump map. Things such as transparency were cooked out of the material type. Let's look at color. I'll click in the color swatch and I will see that I will default to my color wheel. I can also select from an available list of our pre-existing metal types. In this case I will select brass and validate all my way through. Now Let's go over to the magazine holder. I will now start applying on a per object basis. I will select these two objects, go over to the properties tab, over to the material icon, and you'll note that objects in Rhino are configured to use the layer's material. This is the place where you can set it to object or switch back to a layer assignment. To configure per object, click in the list and select use a new material you'll see the same options we had when we applied per layer. Click on the plus sign and in this case 
I will select a preset metal and then stainless steel from the list of metal types. For the actual holder, I will again apply on a per object basis, selecting from the material library. I will go over to organic, leather, and select red leather. Let's try the cushion. I will select the object and now again try importing from the material library. Going down to textile and selecting from the list. Now in this case I would like to iterate between different materials. So instead of having to click and go through the process of selecting and downloading from the material library, I'll just go over to the panels menu and select libraries. Drag the libraries by the tab and anchor it along with my other panels. The libraries panel should default on the render content folder containing the material library. If it's not the case, you can click on the three bars icon and select render content. At this point, I will go again back to textile and simply start dragging and dropping different options. By the way, you can also drag and drop materials on a layer. Simply drag it from the library's panel onto the layer in the layer panel. Okay, this is good. One other folder that I find very useful, and let's go back to render content, is the architectural folder. You'll see that inside we have many, many options for different architectural objects. Let's go to wall and try that out. Masonry, and again, start dragging and dropping. As you can see, the preview is quite fast. There, I like that. Now, let's focus for a second on the ground plane. The ground plane is automatically enabled when you set your scene in rendered mode. To apply a material to the ground plane, let's go over to panels and enable the ground plane panel. Again, dragging and dropping it to anchor it with my other panels. To change the material, go down to use a material and access the material library. Let's go over to architectural, floor, wood, and I think I'll go with parquet extremely light. Okay, my scene is starting to build up. Let's take a look at one more preset. On my table, I have a small glass. I will select it and go over to the properties, tab, material, icon, and again, select the plus sign to access the presets. I will now use glass. There we go. Again, you can see that the interface is actually simplified to contain only glass type settings. We can, for instance, make the glass a little bit more frosted. Rendered mode is just a preview of what you will get in your final calculated ray traced image, but it's not actually calculating real reflections and refractions. For that, we will need to use another mode, which I will show you in a second. Now, last but not least, I would like to go over to the lampshade and show you another option for applying materials. Now again, use materials and then select custom. Now custom will expose all the material properties available in V6 in one single interface. In this case, I will edit the transparency setting and enable self-elimination. Okay, we're getting there. Let's turn on my doors picture and set the scene to ray trace mode. So here's the result of the ray traced image after letting it sit for around three minutes. I don't want to get into too much detail about ray traced mode. I do want to mention, however, a few facts. It starts out with a grainy look and then it continuously calculates and improves the result. 
It also inherits its material and lighting information from Rhino's render settings. The main difference with rendered mode is that it actually calculates reflections and indirect lighting in real time. Whenever your image is ready, you can click on the pause icon at the bottom left corner of the viewport. And that's all for today. Thank you for watching.